so our project that we made was called Dots on the Bus, um, and I made it with my husband Adam, and then one of my coworkers, Jared. And we, I think, were initially drawn into the idea because it was hinted that there might be bicycle data, and um, we're really into biking, and so we're like, sweet, let's go to this meetup, work on it, and it's uh, it's all bus data. We're like. Awesome, we love buses, so what, what would we do with a week of transit data? Um, so uh, Sophie and the team worked with uh, San Francisco and two other Swiss cities to get all this data um, on schedule, actual arrival time, so you can see if the buses were late or not, and then passenger count data, so you can see uh, how many people got on and off a bus at a given stop and what time that happened. And everybody asks, and we asked you, um, the passenger count data is from lasers. So there are two lasers that are invisible that shoot across the doors. And if you walk in, you hit laser one and then laser two. And then if you walk out, you hit laser two and then laser one. So that's how they know if you're onboarding or offboarding. Which also means if it's really busy, you take that data with a grain of salt. Um, so these are our sketches, like our first ideas. Like what, what would it look like if we were trying to show uh, the day in the life of someone using transit? So maybe there's this big uh, map and all the lines are on it and you can pick a map, uh, pick a line off the map and maybe you'd be able to see people waiting at stops because we know how many people get on. So obviously that these people are waiting at a stop. Um, when a bus gets to a stop, you know how many people get off and they're moving around. Um, maybe the dots of the people waiting at the stop could turn red when they're when the bus is late because they're angry. But it turned out that the data wasn't quite good enough, and we didn't want to like make claims about lateness that more, may or may not be true. Um, so we left that out, and we were like, maybe sleepy bus no. Uh, let's actually just concentrate on figuring out how to show uh, what's happening. So if you're looking at it straight down, then people are getting on and off and. Uh, waiting on the street and it's a very squiggly line. So what we wanted to do in order to be able to better show the people getting on and off the bus was to stretch that line out. Um, so uh, if you pick one line, then it kind of is actually stretched out and you can see from the beginning to the end. Um, so this is the kind of the rough wireframe that we came up with that we wanted to build. That there'd be a bunch of lines, one line you would select that was active. Um, there would be people waiting at all the stops. The bus would come along and pick them up. And, um, and then maybe if you hovered over a stop, it would light up the right stop on the map. Um, so I just need to talk a little bit about how we did, made all that happen in D3. Yeah, sure. Uh, the other thing real quick before. Uh, so the reason we kind of went with this idea, um, as opposed to a bunch of other ideas we were kicking around in the beginning, was we wanted to really show like a personal experience of the bus and not just represent people as numbers or as colors or some abstract thing, but to actually show like every individual person along a bus route. Um, and so to break this visualization down, uh, let's start at the very basics, right? And hopefully, yeah, we can see what's going on here. Um, so the first step was to let's get a bus running across a straight line. So a bunch of bus stops on a line and then a bus, that, a dot that moves along from stop to stop. Uh, and this is done with transitions in D3 and a, time, and a bunch of timers, right? So you transition from one stop to the next. Uh, and D3's in-out easing makes this really look realistic. It's a, you know, the bus speeds up and then slows down as it gets to the next stop. Um, so then the next step was to scale the bus by passenger load. So how, as more people get on the bus, let's make the bus bigger, right? Um, and then as people get off, let's make it smaller. Uh, and again, simple transition, uh, but on this, in this case, on the size of the bus. So now let's get to the interesting part. Uh, let's have people getting off the bus, right? And so let's create a whole bunch of dots that are, each dot represents one person. Uh, and in some of the cases, we actually uh, would bog down the browser when we did this. There were too many people getting off the bus all at once. Uh, and so if that was going to happen, we sort of said, oh, wait, there are 300 people. Let's not do that. Uh, let's, let's scale that back. Um, so you know, one, do one dot ray may represent 10 people or something like that in some of the larger cases. But in this case, uh, just one dot per person. Uh, and then let's scatter them to a random location. So sort of like get out to the street, go somewhere, wherever you're going. 
Um, and passengers waiting for a bus was actually a little bit more interesting. Um, and so in this case, we wanted to use, have people show up at a bus stop, get on a bus, right? <laughs> uh, show up at a bus stop, get on the bus. Uh, and so the way this works was there was a force layout uh, that people start in a random position, get pulled to the bus stop, and then at a specific time, you transition everybody from the bus stop to the bus. Does that make sense? From the bus stop to the bus, cool. <laughs> uh, so if we want to bring this all together, uh, so for a given bus moving along uh, and showing up at a stop, we have passengers that all cluster around the stop, and that's the force layout. And then the bus arrives at the stop uh, on a transition uh, on this timer from a previous stop. So we say you use JavaScript timers. Oh yeah, so this is JavaScript timers. Uh, and the one key quirk here is that uh, if you ever want to change the route, you have to be able to cancel all the remaining bus stops, right? Like you have to cancel all the rest of your timers. Uh, so if you ever want to change your UI, everything has to get cleared out. Um, so then passengers have to get off the bus. So what happens like in real life when the bus stops, everybody gets off the bus, and then people get on the bus. Right? So the same thing here. Everybody on the bus has to exit. Uh, that's going to exit. All the passengers at the stop enter the bus. And then the bus scales to the new passenger load, and things continue. Uh, so bringing this all together, uh, we get the original map, which looks something like this. Um, so the top panel is changing color based on the time of day, so it just dawn just happened, and now it's getting light. Um, so this is San Francisco, the number five Fulton, and all the buses are moving along in the morning rush hour. So they're going from that side, which is kind of out of, <laughs> out of town to um, coming towards downtown. So you can see more people are getting off over here. More people are kind of getting on the bus on the outer lines. Um, so like this is Market in Mason, this is Market in Sansom, and then out here, it's kind of that far out stop. Sorry. So we we scaled one day in time to three minutes. So we've watched it slower and faster, but for the app, we just made a uh, one time happen. How would you be able to slow it down? Um, yeah, you could slow it down, but you'd have to. Uh, it's hard to do the way it's built, uh, unfortunately. Because we kick off all the timers, so you can't just kind of push one button to slow it. Um, I mean, you could change one variable in the code, and that would slow it down. <laughs> and then also the buses turn their lights on at night. <laughs> and the inbound buses and the outbound buses are different, because you can see the door on one of them. Uh, and then you can also switch to other cities. There's one that's my favorite. So different cities have very uh, different fields, or different bus lines even in the same city have, have very different fields. Uh, in this, as you might guess, um, I think Amelia is hunting guy as well. The airport line is my favorite. <laughs> Uh, you're about to see, because it, it kind of explodes with buses around rush hour. Um, so they get so many more than we ever saw in any line in San Francisco going at once. Yeah, hopefully this doesn't crash the browser. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I get kind of jealous when I look at these. Yeah, there it's crashing the browser now. Um, <laughs> so, happy to answer any questions now besides those, or we can go back. I don't know how we did on time. Yeah, you can take a couple questions. What's the most challenging part of the whole thing? You could boil it down to just one part of it. Could you repeat the question? What was the most challenging part of the project if we could boil it down to one challenge? Um, probably getting the data set up for the three cities, um, even though uh, you guys did so much work to get the data from the cities, uh, everybody provides the same data a little bit differently. 
<laughs> um, which is always a challenge. And then getting everything working all uh, all at once. Uh, so I probably worked a little bit yesterday to just set this demo up. Uh, and getting all the pieces individually uh, it was a lot easier than it was to get them all running at the same time, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly. <laughs> So is your code is open source, yes? Um, it's not right now. Uh, we are currently working to make it work with a real-time in conjunction with, uh, real-time data in conjunction with Fusebool, and then after we're done with that contract, we're gonna open source it. Uh, do you have a problem with displaying in different browsers or uh, mobiles? Uh, how well does it work? D3.js. Um, sure, yeah, it definitely needs a modern browser. Um, it's not going to work on some of the older stuff. So in particular, this is all on an SVG canvas, and so the browser needs to support that. Um, and then as you saw, the sort of, depending on the line and the route, there's a lot of stuff going on, and so it'll start to eat up the browser memory. And if it's not, a browser's not super efficient at it, uh, you'll probably crash the, some browsers faster than others. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't try it on your phone. <laughs> uh, uh, someone from the, the live streaming um, is watching from the live feed was asking, where does the map layer come from? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so shout out to Stamen. Uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> An open street map. All right. What did you learn out of the ideas and did you learn anything out of that that you did not suspect before? I've never seen any, uh, like I just hadn't been able to see before the, the ways that the kind of rush hour flow into downtown and flow out of downtown on various lines happened and I thought that was, it was really interesting for me to be able to see that as like one dot per person. I think I, I learned a couple of like lines to avoid. Like you could see some of them were just really late <laughs> all the time. If, if you were going to start over, what would you do differently? Like, Probably make the sunset colors better. <laughs> yeah. Was there a difference between the uh, the trolley lines, like the buses that are uh, electric versus the buses that are gas? Do we have the trolley lines? Good question. Yeah, so no. Uh, unfortunately for the Muni data, they don't have automatic passenger counters on their trolley line. So like on the end line, for instance, it, there's no automatic passenger count. And so this, that was actually excluded from the data set, unfortunately. Because I imagine you would see a little bit of a difference there. Maybe. <laughs> we just made it work with BART um, this weekend with their real-time spec. So. I haven't drawn the cute BART train yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's perhaps, oh yeah. And that's perhaps the other thing that we would take away from this. If we were gonna do this all again, we would maybe use like, so there's a Google Transit feed specification spec, uh, like kind of all transit agencies adhere to if they wanna use Google Maps, if they wanna have their system on Google Maps. And so having a, like a data standard that's really clean and really well set out um, was, it made things a lot easier to set up. 